Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry. And today I'm at the Temple of Dender in the city of Kena. Q-E-N-A, which is a city of about 4 million people live here. And, and this temple is different from the others in that a lot of the carvings still have a lot of color to them. A lot of the carvings were made in color and I heard that they use various spices for coloring which of course fades in the sun but this temple has a roof over the entire temple and also there are steps going up to the second floor and the roof of the temple which we're going to go up and see that as well. So I think you'll like this video even if you've seen some other of my videos of temples this one is much different and at the end of the video I'm going to show you some scenes a video I took from the window in my bus that drove us from the boat to the temple here and by the way this entire trip we have had a police escort riding in the bus every single tour we've taken and we've been pretty much assured that nothing foul would happen but just to make people feel safe we have had an armed security officer on the bus with us so you might find that interesting the temple of Thunder is one of the best preserved in the ancient world but what makes it truly unique are its rooftop chapels and its outlying shrines and sanctuaries, created by a great monk. The entire complex, which covers over 80,000 square meters, gives archaeologists a window into the beliefs of the Egyptians who worshipped here thousands of years ago. Temples were seen as homes to the gods on earth and played a vital role in ancient Egyptian culture. Dandara is dedicated to one of the most nurturing goddesses in the Egyptian pantheon, Hathor. She was the goddess of love. She was the goddess of beauty. She was the goddess of childhood. She was representing the beauty in the eyes of everyone. Hathor was the embodiment of all that was good and she was also the goddess of music. Her face can be seen at the top of a row of stone columns. These take the form of a giant version of a sacred musical record. During religious festivals, the Nara would be filled with loud and joyful noise. For the ancient Egyptians, silence could often mean death. Work on Hathor Temple began in the first century AD, when Egypt was ruled by Greek kings called the Ptolemies. The temple took over 30 years to build. On the back wall is a depiction of the most famous of the Ptolemies, the legendary Queen Cleopatra. She is pictured with her son Caesarion, whose father was the Roman emperor Julius Caesar. But Cleopatra's suicide, allegedly by the bite of a poisonous snake, ended three centuries of Greek rule in Egypt, leaving the way clear for the new colonial rulers, the Romans. The Roman rulers adopted Hathor as the goddess of motherhood and fertility, and at Dandara, the added a birth house. This was not a maternity hospital, but a sacred chapel used for ceremonies to celebrate the divine birth of a child god. It was also where women having difficulty conceiving a child would appeal to Hathor for help. Many gods were linked with childbirth, including the dwarf god Bess. 
these grotesque appearance was supposed to scare away any evil spirits which might cause complications during delivery. A girl that once hung with the dark reveals that pregnant women often gave birth squatting on birthing bricks. Since delivery could be dangerous for both mother and baby, the goddesses Hathor and Tauret will be called upon for support and protection. The focus of the complex is the temple of Hathor. It was a center of spirituality. Although it played a pivotal role in Egyptian society, the temple was also a place of mystery. Only priests and the pharaoh were allowed to enter Hathor's most sacred rooms. Priests performed daily rituals to preserve the relationship on which all life depended, the one between man and the goddess Hathor. In return, Hathor would protect the land of Egypt and the power of its most important person, the pharaoh himself. The ancient Egyptians built shrines there to be closer to their gods. Each new year, a statue of Hathor was carried up the stairs to await the dawn. Touched by the rays of the sun, the goddess's soul was revitalized. As a compassionate goddess, Hathor also had the reputation for healing and her temple attracted alien pilgrims looking for a cure. To the right of the temple is the sanitarium. It's thought that waters from Dandara had divine qualities, rather like the sacred well of Zemzem at Mecca or the healing spring at Lourdes. Water was collected in basins from the sacred lake and further guessed by the priests. Pilgrims would then drink or wash themselves with this holy water. And for the lucky few, there was even more potent healing water to be found in the temple itself. The roof is crisscrossed with shallow drainage channels designed to capture the rainwater. The water then ran down the vertical column of sacred texts, gaining magical qualities from its contact with powerful water. another unusual temple I'm walking up to looks different than the others at least from here that's the entrance and the very first one on the right is the ibis so the black one is cooler the white one is the ibis the ibis was the dog I'm going to scan across the front of the triple front. Oh, 
Oh, it's got some color up there. Oh, yeah. And the others forgot to about it. Uh, it is one of the Tullamai temples uh, we are going to visit. Uh, but the place where we are, Tandara, used to be always uh, a center of cult of the goddess Hathora. Why the place here was a center of culture, we decided to leave the Maya Valley. She has gone to Nubia and she converted herself into the form of uh, Elionis, goddess Sekhmet, in order to hide. She stayed there for a while and the Nubians there built a number of temples along the line for the goddess Hathor. They were happy that one of the daughters of Ra is shown there in Nubia. That was the case for some time and the god Ra wanted to get his daughter This is something completely different. I'll, let, I'll give you enough time to take your photos. Yeah. On the ceiling of this hyperspiral hula, the scenes there are related to the afterlife. Very much the same of those who have seen in the Valley of the Kings. The Tillamai Kings were mistakenly copied things from the Valley of the Kings. We didn't know much about the religion and we've gone through situations that told us about that. So when we were looking at the Valley of the Kings scenes, they didn't fancy them and we must have affected them over there. One of the other. But this is very unusual to see the afterlife scenes on a ceiling of a temple. Okay. Then the rest of the scenes you can see back in Africa and the Chinese with the Dasha, you know, the two, oh, the Coptics, the Coptics left inside the temples, huh? like three lay temples, when they left the Coptic cross representation everywhere, so they were the very same people who damaged the scenes here. He faced uh, the figures uh, because uh, they never believed in several gods. Uh, they believed in one god and they knew that the figures around for the gods and that's this why is on the ceiling. Them. And the other thing, if you look at the ceiling and especially in there, you see smoke. Huh? Yes. This is the section of the temple where uh, the, the priest of the temple would be praying. Okay? The first time we started the one before us, noblemen and military leaders would be praying there. And here is the section of the temple. This is the most holy section in the temple. The section was not allowed to anyone to get inside it but the king and the high priest. So the ancient Egyptians were being very well organized and they had a room for everybody. Uh, the outer courtyard for the commoners. A high style hall for the noblemen and the military leaders. Another one for the priests. Here is the temple, the place for the king. And he couldn't have been those who get inside the snow to pray. There were some procedures they are recorded here. As I was saying, that they are not meant to be at all here. So they came on places. Uh, walking the edge of the water. So telling us that this, that's the boat of the Horus or that's the boat of uh, Ah, the seas are the base as you see. But why some part of the seas were not the base? Those were covered under the sand. There are just numerous rooms around here. See those big doors? One, two, three, four. Just numerous rooms all around this temple. This one has some good color to it. Dark red, wow. Yellow weekend, please. Black. Ladies with wings. And on the bed is the god Osiris. Can you see her? The god Osiris. That's when the goddess Neftis has managed to fix the missing part back into the body. And right above the missing part, there is a bird. This is going up to the second floor. And this is the only temple that has second floor access. It's just going around and around. 
or squared square actually. And finally reach the top. This is looking out from the roof. And there's actually another level that goes up here. That one there, when all the boards were put together, and that's when the goddess Isis was crying. I was saying before that the holy tears of Isis gave him a life again. So these are the two figures of Osiris while he was resurrected. We are walking inside this woman. Mind your head and water, is that Lisa? There are four standing figures of ladies, can you see that? Two there and two here. And those are like the four cardinal points. That's where the palm trees are, that meant to be the uh, sacred lake of the temple. Like the one we saw at Cardinal Lake yesterday. Then uh, we're having here uh, the very famous scene of uh, uh, the Queen Cleopatra Seven. Caesarea, her son. Elmer's son. And what's he holding? Turning the essences in front of Hazel and Isis. Yeah. You see the god is Hazel? Yeah. And this is the god Horus. Uh, burning the essences. This is the side of the temple. Huge, huge building. And you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows of carvings. And each one looks like an average of eight feet high. Now on this corner section, some of these carvings are in pretty good shape. This really big one is in pretty good shape. Next, this one is, but look here, all chopped up. And that is about, I guess, 40 feet high off the ground. How do they get up there to do that? And again, you'll notice here that you'll not find a carving on the wall that has a woman depicted with more than one breast. For some reason, it just isn't done in Egypt. I'd like to know why. Now this one is in really good preservation. They didn't ruin anything there, I don't think. Here's another temple building with a bunch of columns off to the side there. You can see. So I hope you've enjoyed this video as well of the temple at Dender in Kina. Good day folks. Okay, so uh, that's the, the meaning of Abu Hamal Maka. There are two of them. One that opens manually and 10 minutes after that is another one automatically like is that we've gone through. Uh, after automatically and after going the second walk, we are cruising to Valiana. We expect to be there around 9 o'clock. So the itinerary of ourselves is to visit a temple tomorrow, Abidu's temple at Valiana. Uh, so while I'm writing the itinerary tonight, I'll be writing down like 9, then it will arrive. So it could be 9.15, 9.20, 9.10, but 
I would love to move once we are back, so that we are having more time at the Temple of Abidosa. So, uh, starting from 9 o'clock, uh, we shall be there in Suhag. So, after visiting uh, Abidos Temple, we'll come back. Uh, the arrangement so far is to go driving from Baliana to, to Suhag, which is around one hour drive, to visit the museum, and the ship will be uh, joining us there. Uh, there on the uh, left hand side, you can see there is a railway bridge. This is the one, our, a similar one we will be uh, going through uh, this evening. This one of Kanahid is quite high, we go underneath. Uh, well, that one of Mega Hamani, we need to open it to go through it. Uh, but it's not very much similar to that one, but it will be, as I said, uh, revolving or swinging to little stuff. That's 20 or 30 minutes uh, slideshow about the birds of Egypt and the lounge before that. Uh,